when you sign on for these assignments, I said, be careful what you sign on for because you got to agree to do what they want you to do. Go where they want you to go, to do what you want to do. But they have told me many times through my clients, you find your passion. You find what you're really supposed to do, what you're here for. You don't get sick and you don't age because you're doing what you're supposed to be doing and you're happy doing it. So that's probably why they said, I found what our mission is after raising a family and doing all this other thing. That's why I said I've had several lives in one. You know, my husband was in a wheelchair for 25 years after he was almost killed in the Navy and his body was crushed. So we had to get all that behind us and raising a big family before the universe said, now it's time to step into this role. So you never know what kind of a plan or contract you have made on the other side before you come in. So don't try to get out of it too soon. The best is yet to come. You don't know what the rest of the contract is. <coughs> First, you have to get rid of all the old junk, the garbage and the baggage out of your life. And then you can move into what you really came for. So many people tell, come to see me and they said, I want out. I want to commit suicide. I don't want to be here anymore. They don't realize what they've contracted to do. Of course, if you get out too soon, you got to come back and do it again. You don't get out of anything. <laughs> That's not the way the law of karma works. Okay, um, I'm not going to go into too much of the three waves of volunteers. I think last year, that's what I mostly talked about, wasn't it? That's what the book I finished last year, and it's making waves all over the world. But I want to mention it, It's the three waves of volunteers and the new earth. But as I said, all of my work is an accumulation of the different information that comes through all of these thousands of people that I see. That's how I come up with these theories. First, let's talk about the earth school. You've all signed on to be here in the earth school. And I'm going to talk about that first to show where you have come to now as we're in 2012. And the different speakers have been talking about God. And this is all in my books also. And that's why I said a lot of these concepts were very challenging in the beginning. Okay. We all began with God. I have so many clients coming to me and on their list of questions is always, where did I come from? But they always say, why am I here too? Well, where did I come from? And I tell them we all came from the same place. No, I want to know what's my home, my home planet. There's no such thing. We all came from the same place. Other planets are just one of the schools that we sign on to learn at. But that's not home, not the real home. We all began at the same place. We all started with God, or what they call the source. Now, I've had many, many people go back to the source. They go back to when they were with God before they ever started on this long journey to become humans. Humans are kind of like the last part of the whole thing. This is the worst part, really. <laughs> But we all began at the same place, and I've had people go back and experience it, and they always describe God the same way. First, you have to get over the idea that God is a man. He's not a man. If anything, he would be a woman. <laughs> be because women are the creative power. But he's neither one. He's not male or female. There is no gender. And when people go back to be with God, You're just doing, an or instead of going to past lives, this is what they do. They go back to the beginning. They always describe it the same way. 
that God is like a huge energy force. They describe it like a big bright light. Some of them say they are in the sun, but it's not hot. Other ones say the great central sun is what they call it, but it's a huge light. And when they're there, there's total love. They don't want to leave. They're all together. Everyone is together and they all want to stay there. They don't want to leave. It is so much love and is so much beauty. And when I've had people go back there, they say, don't wake me up. I want to stay here because it's so beautiful. And afterwards, they, the ones I work with, they always come through the people I work with and they said uh, that the person who had the session, they wanted to get a taste of what it was like. It was one of their questions. They wanted to know what is God really like? They wanted a taste of home. But they said, we can just give her a taste. If we showed her what it was really like, she wouldn't want to return. But you gave her enough so that at least she'd have an idea of what it was like. It's so beautiful and so wonderful. They said, a human being cannot really understand the totality of God, of the source. It is so enormous. They said, our belief in God and our concept of God is like a tiny thread compared to what it really is. We cannot understand the totality of it. Then they said, consider the other people out there who don't even have the metaphysical background. Their concept of God isn't even as big as a tiny thread. That's how hard it is to understand. But they said, it's the glue that holds everything together. If it were to wink out for a fraction of a second, everything would disintegrate. That's how powerful this is. And I've gone into a lot of this in my books, the different versions of the dreamer dreams the dream, life is an illusion. One concept I like to bring up that may shake you up a little, this building, this room didn't even exist until you collectively decided to be here today. Is that a little hard to understand? This is the kind of concepts I'm getting. <coughs> it's the collective consciousness of how it creates that when we decided to come here, we constructed this thing out of the energy because everything is energy. And that's how it works. When we all began, we were all part of God. This beautiful light, this huge energy, total love, we all began there. And God decided he wanted to learn, he wanted to know, he was curious. So what happened? He burst out in all directions. It's called, some of them call it the Big Bang Theory. And I've had a lot of people argue with me about these things. I'm just, I'm the reporter, remember, the reporter, the investigator. I report what I get. It burst out in all directions, and what it did, all these tiny sparks flew out in all directions. Some of these sparks became galaxies. Some of them became universes. Many, many of them became your own individual soul. When I take people back in the sessions to find out what you really, really are, all they see is a tiny little spark of light. That's what your soul is, your spirit, a tiny little spark of light. And that's how you all began. This is, you are not a body. You have a body. This is just a suit of clothes, a costume you're wearing right now to play this part, this role in this stage play that you're involved in. It's, everything is an illusion. Nothing is real. I've had people go through the death experiences, and 
after they've died and they're on the spirit side, they look back at the life and they'll say, it was just a play. I can see all the actors on stage getting ready to come out and play their parts. I can see the actors in the wings getting ready to come on. And they said, but when I was there, it was so hard and so difficult. But now that I'm on the other side, it was like a blink of an eye. We get caught up in the illusion. So you are the producer, director, and actor in your own play. You're also the script writer. But the script is being written as it goes along. You know what that means? You can change the script anytime you want. You're the writer, you're the actor. You don't like the way the scene is going, change it. This is how much power we have and we don't realize it. So you're just an actor wearing a costume to play this part. But when God burst out and sent everyone out, he said, go my children and learn. Learn everything there is to learn. Have every experience there is to experience. He said, there is no bad, there is no good. There's only lessons and experiences. And you choose these every time you come into a life. And what you chose to learn, we all have bad things happen in our lives. That's life. But what did you learn from it? Remember, you created it to learn something from. You made it, it may be more difficult than it should have been, but you created it to learn something. And I have clients that I ask that too, and they'll say, I didn't learn anything. It was just a horrible experience. What happens then if you say, I didn't learn anything? You gotta take that class over again. Earth is nothing but a school that you signed on here to experience. There are many, many schools out there because when we start out, God said, learn everything, everything that's possible, everything there is, every things you can't even imagine and then bring it back to me. And when we're all done with all of our schools, with all of our lessons, we take all the information back, download it into the gigantic computer that is God, that is the source. I asked them one time, well then what does he do with it? He said, he starts over again, recreating again. It was unending. But when you start on the schools, you go to other planets, you go to other dimensions, you have to know what all of that is like. And I proved this by taking hundreds of people, I never know where they're going to go. I think they're going to go into past life. They don't, they go on these other planets, other dimensions, and they learn whatever it is to be learned there. But when you come to Earth, they said this is the most difficult planet in the universe. It's the hardest. It's the densest. It's the heaviest. They don't want to come here. It's very, very difficult. They have a lot more fun on the other planets. And also they have a lot of fun on the spirit side. They'd like rather best better stay over there because they're learning a lot there. There's schools, there's all kinds of things on the spirit side. And I've written about all of these things in my books. But when they decide they're going to come to Earth and take on Earth's school, they're warned. This is going to be very difficult. You know this, don't you? Once you sign on for the Earth school, it's a long school. You can't get out of it until you are finished. You have to take all the grades, all the steps. You can't jump from kindergarten to college. You have to finish this class before you go to the next class. If you fail that class, 
There's no judgment. You just take it over again. And I've had many clients who are taking the same class over and over and over again. They go through maybe four or five lives with the same people, same circumstance, and they still haven't got it. You probably know people like that in your own lives, drawing the same circumstances to them time after time, the same kind of people to them time after time. Like, when are you going to get it? Now, the universe, but once running all of this, and I'm glad somebody's running it, they don't care how long it takes you to pass one class, one grade. You have eternity. But do you want to take eternity to one, or learn one little lesson? While everybody else is going on to high school, to college, you're still stuck on the second grade. If that's what you want, it's your free will, you can do it. But if you realize you're just repeating the same class over and over again and not moving forward, then it finally begins to get into your head, okay, I don't need to keep repeating this, I'm gonna move on. And you go to the next class, the next grade, which may or may not be easier, may be harder, but at least it'll be different. Because there's no judging, you judge yourself. You decide yourself what you're going to learn when you come into a life. You set up the circumstances. Everybody here has been saying the same things. You choose your parents. You choose where you're going to live, the environment, what is going to be the best for you. You decide it all. But you have all these advisors over there, and they're always trying to help you. They can't tell you what to do, but they can help you. Uh, they said, are you sure you want to do this? And they said, oh yeah, I want to get rid of everything at once. I want to get rid of all the karma. And you pile your plate pretty full. Are you sure you want to do that? Yeah, I want to get it over with all at once. Say, okay, we'll be there to help you, but it's going to be very difficult. Because so many of us have taken so long to learn the lessons, we're caught on the wheel of karma. We haven't got it. We keep making the same mistake over and over and over again. You don't get out of anything. You have to take that lesson until you learn it. And you keep coming back with the same people just playing different roles. You be the husband this time, I'll be the wife. Or you be the mother, I'll be the child. Maybe we can figure it out. But it's the wheel of karma. The, one of the only things that Jesus came to teach us was how to get off the wheel of karma. We were going round and around and around. We were not moving upward. So he came to show us how to get off of the wheel. Of course, the only way is always with love. Love is the greatest thing there is. God, the source, is total love. And that's all they're ever trying to teach anyone. It's just that a life on Earth is so much difficult. I said this is the most difficult planet in the universe. The densest, the heaviest. They say when you sign on to come here, they really admire you. They say you have to be very brave to take that step and to sign up on this school. So the majority of us are caught on this wheel going round and around and around for how many hundreds and thousands of lifetimes? We're not going anywhere. Now, these three waves of volunteers that have come in, that are volunteering, their energy is needed to help with the ascension, to help with the shifting. It is needed to help raise this. We can't do it by our, ourselves. The ones who are caught on the wheel of karma can't do it. They would be with the old earth and be destroyed. So the first wave of volunteers, I like to think are, like now I think it starts after World War II. Those born after 1945, till they're about, I guess, 40, 50, maybe late 30s, that age group. And I've had some people tell me they have the same characteristics and they're in their early 60s. That's possible. 
and other ones may have been, they said may have been sent as forerunners to test the waters. Because they told me, we have tried this three times. The other times we couldn't get the critical mass and it didn't work. But now we've got it. Hundreds of thousands of volunteers have come in. We have tipped the scales and we have the critical mass now to save the world. That's why we're moving into the other dimension. But the first wave are those in that age group. They don't want to be here. They don't like it here. They don't understand the violence. Why do people hurt each other? What's this all about? They don't understand emotions, especially strong emotions. Strong emotions frighten them because they don't, you can see why, they've never experienced life on earth. They're just thrown into this mess. They don't understand emotions, they don't like violence, and they're always saying, I wanna go home. I don't like it here. I don't know where home is, I just know it's not here. And I get thousands of emails so if I don't answer your emails, be aware that I do read them. It's just that I can't possibly answer them all. But in many of them, the people will say, I can remember being a little child standing in the kitchen talking to my mother and saying, Mommy, I want to go home. And they say, well, you are home. No, I'm not. They know this is not where home is. And they're very unhappy here. And many in the first wave have tried to commit suicide to get out. That's how unhappy they are. And the first book I wrote about this was Keepers of the Garden, back in the 80, when I, for 80s, when I found my first one of this, and I didn't even know what it was. Now, after that, I began getting many, many people coming to me telling me the same story. The second wave had it easier. They would be, 30s, 20s, 30s, maybe some of the 40s in that age group. Some of these age groups overlap. Because people will tell me, well, I think I've got these characteristics, but I'm not in that age group. The second wave followed in the footsteps of the first wave, so they had it a little easier. I asked them one time, why did the first wave have it so hard? They said, because somebody had to be the one to be the way shower, the um, pioneer, to start that out, to set the path for the other ones to follow. That's why it was more difficult. So the second wave have come in. They are what I call antennas, generators, channelers of energy. They are here receiving this energy to send the energy to all the other people of the world. And part of my, uh, when the clients come in and they have their list, of, their list of questions, the main question, I call it the universal question, they always wanna know, why am I here? What am I supposed to be doing? And you know, that's the main question. So when I get these people, they always wanna know, why am I here? They're always told you're here to generate energy. You're here to spread the energy. The second wave people can walk through a crowded mall of people and affect everyone that they come in contact with. They don't know it consciously, but they affect every single person they come in contact with by because they are channeling this energy to help change the people and raise the vibrations of the earth. That's what I mean, that's why they're here to volunteer these jobs. And the people say, well, what am, what am I supposed to be doing? They said, you're not supposed to do anything. You're just supposed to be. And this one man said, but I want to do something. You are doing something just by being. But there's a paradox here. These people are supposed to be uh, spreading energy to people, but they don't like people. 
they'd rather stay home by themselves. Many of the second wave live alone. They uh, work from their homes. They have no desire to go out and mix with people. They don't like the energies of the other people. Many of them don't get married. First and second wave, many of them don't marry and don't have children because having children, you create karma. And when they, these volunteers come in to earth, they have a coating, a covering, a sheath over their body, their soul, to keep them from accumulating karma. It kind of bounces off of them because they don't want them to be stuck here. Do your job and get out. So they're just here to help. So the second wave had it a little easier, but still you're here just to generate energy and help people. The third wave, of course, are the children, the new children that have come in. Everybody's DNA is being changed. It's all part of this shifting into the new earth. Everybody's DNA is being changed. Now with this shifting, the older people are having the hardest time adapting. Of course, the young people are already there. Their DNA is already where it's supposed to be when they come in. They are so advanced, they're there already. That's the third wave. The gift of the world are these children. But the other ones, we have to catch up. But I said it has to be a gradual process, a gradual shifting. And many of these, especially the older people, is that if you can't handle it, you'll transition. Because now the energy is speeding up and they're moving much, much faster. 